What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel, and in this video we are going to talk about the reduce function and some of the more helpful options for it where you may end up not even needing to use it. So with that, let's go ahead, let's get started. We'll open up our project. We will create a new Kotlin file. We will call it reduce. We will minimize that. Zoom in here, create a main function. Close out of our previous grouping uh, class, and then we will get started. So the reduce operator in Kotlin is really useful when you have a list of items and you want to reduce it to just a single element. So what this looks like is, let's say, so we have our library, our books, and then our map. Now, one thing that we haven't worked with yet within the library, if we go over here and just take a look at it and poke around, you'll notice that we have that price. So uh, these are just prices that when I was looking at Amazon, the, the price of the books. Interesting, like just like a weird little tidbit. The Harry Potter books, you can't really buy them, it seems like, like or at least like buy them new. So some of them are like, 3419, so like that's the original one that I don't think is in print anymore. And then others like, I think like Deathly Hollows, I think they still have some that are in print that are like brand new in print, so you can get it cheaper. But anyway, random thing I didn't realize was a thing. Uh, getting back to this though, and talking about our reduce function, we are going to first map the books to just be the prices of the books because what we want to know is the total cost of the books. So if we do our price and then we do reduce, which takes an accumulator, and then this one is going to be the price. What we do is we take our accumulator plus our price, and then we have the also scope function and then we can do print line here, and then we'll just say total value, oops, total value. So if we go ahead, we run this, you'll see that the total value is $617.90 for the books that are in that library. All right, and so the way that this works is when you have a reduce function as two parameters, one is the accumulator, which is going to be, in this case, an integer. And the other one is the value that will be operated on. And so in that case, this would be our price. But if we, let's say we remove this, it would be instead a book and another book if we were just reducing the books. But there's not really a good way or like a good reason why you would reduce all the books in, in a library into a single book um, so that's why we're going with price but but what you do then is you have this operation on this side where you take the accumulator so the previous known value and then we're going to add the price because we want to add up the total value of all of them alternatively though if you were like say wanting to do incremental changes or things like that the accumulator is essentially the the current known value and then the other one, this so this price in this case, this would be the the thing that is going to change the accumulated values. Reduce is a little confusing. Um, it's it's kind of hard to explain at times too. Uh, one one thing that I want to now call out and kind of why you may not use the reduce function is there are other accumulator functions that you can run, which will do essentially this work for you. So what that looks like is, let's say we have, again, we have our library, we have our books, we'll map it to the price. Let's say we want to do the exact same thing. We can just run the sum function and then it will be, you know, the also. So we can go ahead and just print out the total value again and we should see the same the same thing. If I uncomment out that one, we should see the same value for both. 
but there are some other things we can do. So uh, in this case, we're always mapping the uh, price. So let's say that we don't want to do that, but we still want to get the sum. If we want to remove that map function, we can do sum by, and then we just say it price, and then we can copy our also scope function. And if we go ahead and run it, and there we go. We end up with the same value. So the sum by function allows you to basically combine the sum operator along with a map operator. So you're doing a transformation and a sum in the same function. But there are, of course, some other options out there. So let's say we want to do library books. And in this case, we'll just do a map to the price again. Let's say we want to know the average price of the books. So we do average and then also, and if we do print line, in this case, we will say average value is it. And then if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that the average value is 1584 with a bunch of other decimals after it. So because these prices are already just integers, so this actually would just be the average price is $15.84. We can take a bit of a shortcut just to uh, make it look a little bit nicer, and we can just use this round to int convenience function. And we go ahead, we run it again. You'll see it's 1584. So it's a little bit nicer if you want to make sure that it's always going to be an integer if you're dealing with integers. You can do that. There's, of course, you know, there are reasons why you may not want to do that. If it's especially important to keep those decimal places, then definitely don't want to round them off. But in this case, it's fine. And then there's two more that I just want to show, which will be, um, let's say we want to know the uh, minimum value. So we can do it.price. And then, oops, actually, we don't need the map because there is a, so there's a min by function. And we can just do it.price. And then also print line. Now we can say the cheapest book, it. So what this ends up doing is it's not going to give us the price of the book necessarily. It's just going to give us the book itself. So we have the average value here, and if we, we run it, we can see average value still works out the same, of course, but then the cheapest book, we can see Lord of the Flies, which has been print forever, is $5.99. And then just like the min buy, there's also a max buy function. We can do at price, so we're going to get the max book value, and then we'll do also print line, and then we will say the most expensive book, which from the tangent from earlier, I believe it's probably going to be a Harry Potter book, but we will we will soon find out. Uh, and yes, it's uh, Order of the Phoenix. So that's that's pretty much it. So the reduce function can be pretty useful for cases where you need to combine values together. However, there are, depending on what you're doing, there are circumstances where uh, reduce just may not make sense. Like it, it really only make matters if you have a list, some collection of, of items and you want to reduce it down to just a single element. But if you're doing things like you're doing math or you're doing whatever, you can use these different accumulator operators to then figure out what those values are. So while my example is, is showing you like getting the total price of the books, just know there are convenience functions built into Kotlin that will do that for you. And with that, hopefully this video helped. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure, be sure to leave a comment below. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay up to date on the newer videos that I'm making, be sure to subscribe. And other than that, Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.